All right. So Adam, tell everybody again how to do the pin because I have yeah. like a PowerPoint I need to show. Oh wow, a PowerPoint. I know. You oh, know like, that, that's what makes I'll them just yeah, spiffy. Right? I'm um, in sales. Well, Fancy yeah, girl. Is, if you if you uh, mouse over to N and you right click on her face in Teams, you should see three <laughs> options there. Um, one says mute participant. Don't do that because then you won't be able to hear her. Uh, you also may not have that option. The other one would be to pin her. Um, the other is fit the frame. Hit the pin. And what that'll do is make her take up most of the screen and then we'll all be smaller icons across the bottom. Um, the recording doesn't pay attention to any of that. The recording is just using the generic view of the call. But at least you can, uh, in your live mode, just see Anne and not me. Anne, you're up. You're muted. You're muted. Can't hear you. Oh, hi, Tom. Thank you for letting me know. Um, uh, anytime. Yeah. Hi again. I'm Ann Sliney. I'm in sales and new sales here. Um, I'm in the Boston area and I've been at Net at Work for over six years. Been a great experience for me and uh, I love working here. And I want to tell you a little bit about myself. It's a little different. I'm a little bit more like Tom Miller because um, I'm an empty nester. So I don't have a bunch of little kids in the background to show you and we can't do any singing or dancing or anything. But I am right now at my son's house. We're all taking turns uh, because I have two grandchildren and there's no um, no daycare. So if he comes running in here, that will be great. Um, so I want to tell you what makes me happy. It's not unusual, um, but I did put it in a PowerPoint so that I could show you the people that make me happy. And I have <clears throat> a little bit of a story to tell. It's maybe a little different. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. If you don't, well, that's okay too. Uh -huh. Oh, by the way, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm known for being um, maybe a little too honest. So let me see if I can show my screen. I want to share my, um, whoops, my desktop and see if, tell me if you can see um, a PowerPoint that says what makes me happy. Yep. Yes. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Please. So Yay. what makes me happy? Um, family, like everybody else, family makes me happy. In Italian, we're familiar and, um, and it is huge. My family is huge. So I'd like to introduce some of them. This is me and my husband. This is my husband, George. Um, we've only been married for three years. We've been together for 10. It seems kind of crazy that anybody at our age would get married, but it seems to be working out for us. Um, this is my son and daughter-in-law. This is Thomas and Sarah. Um, I'm at Thomas and Sarah's house right now. And this was um, Thomas and I when he um, presented me with my first grandchild, William, who's in the uh, back, of, back of me right now. And he's, uh, he's three years old. And I have to tell you that being a grandmother has been like amazing uh, part of my life. Once again, that's William, a, a little older. Um, that's my son, Thomas. He, um, he went gray at 25, completely gray at 30. Um, he blames me as opposed to the other way around, um, having me for his mother turned him gray. Um, that's my daughter, Mary, and her husband, Justin, when they got married. Um, it was a lot of fun. Alex sent a really expensive gift to the, to the couple. Um, just in case anybody else wants to know that. <laughs> just joking, Alex. <laughs> um, this, this, is Carol, this is Caroline. Uh, she's the love of my life. She's the, uh, our newest grandchild, and she's seven months, and she's a blast. So um, that's my family. That's my immediate family, and pretty much that's what I do. That's what I spend all my time doing. Um, I wouldn't give it up. I wouldn't trade any part of it. When I'm not at work, this is where I'm at. I'm hanging out with these people that mean the most to me in my life. But the family comes to me from um, this story, which I thought to give you a little bit about my background and a little bit of my grit and determination that I have. Um, I'd like to tell you, take a couple of minutes and tell you about my immigrant story. 
So this story is probably something that a, a lot of people can relate to. Um, being, you know, I know that a lot of people on this call also have immigrant stories, but this one's a little different. So the immigrant story is the two sides of my family, the Pescatories and the Doherty's. And this is the family that I grew up in. Um, you can see there's, I bet you can't guess which one is the Irish and which one's the Italian. Um, that's my dad. He's um, a very short Italian guy who... Um, sorry, he, sorry, and Adam, can you, Adam, can you mute, mute everybody? You know what? Um, it's the dog in the background eating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The dog just came in and just um, and started eating. So let me get him out of here. We got all natural, and Charlie. Sorry, yeah, we're, Charlie. we're cool. good. Whatever chaos there is in your house, we, we want to see that. So. Oh, my goodness. I don't I can't even turn it around. <laughs> just hold on for one second. <laughs> get you no, don't worry about it. We'll be OK. All right. OK, so there we go. So uh, this is my family. This is my uh, my family that I grew up in. And um, that's my dad, who is the short Italian guy and my mother, who is the tall Irish pretty woman. And um, they had eight kids and I'm the youngest. So I'm this little girl over here. Youngest of eight children. It was a lot of fun. Uh, my dad and mom are first generation um, Americans. And like a lot of first generation Americans, um, my dad worked his ass off and, um, and grew a, a pretty good sized distribution business and was really successful. And uh, we're all real proud of him and they're not around anymore, but that's okay. So it did start um, because their parents immigrated here. My grandparents were um, Umberto Arnaldo uh, Pescatore and Teresa Pacillo from one side, Charlie. And Ed, sorry, and Edward <laughs> Philip Doherty and Mary Josephine McLaughlin. So you couldn't get more Irish and more Italian in Boston than that. And these are the ships they came on. Uh, this was the Irish ship that my grandfather came on called the Romantic. And my grandfather came on the Galetta, my grandfather and grandmother. So this is where the story gets starts to get interesting, where I think it's interesting anyway. I'll just talk about my Italian grandparents. <clears throat> this is where they grew up, um, this beautiful little mountain town called Montefalcione. And we always knew that my grandfather was adopted. We didn't know much about him other than the fact that his last name was Pescatore, which means fisherman. So we always thought that he had that name because he was a fisherman, that he came to this country and that was his trade. And that's where we thought his name came from. So doing all the DNA tests that, that people have been doing for the last couple of years, we decided, my brother decided, you know what, we're gonna go find out where grandpa's really from and what his name was and see if we can't find any of the people he came from. So my nephew was living in Italy at the time and he speaks Italian. So they went to the town in Montefalcione to find his birth records. And they couldn't find him anywhere. They knew when he was born, they knew his name, and they knew he, the year he was born, but there was no um, finding his birth records. So they, they kept at it, they had microfiche and everything, and they know he wasn't from anywhere else when this lovely lady who was the town clerk said, you might want to look at these pages. You might find them here. So they, lo and behold, they found this really old documents and at the top of the document in Italian, it said bastardo. So if any of you are Spanish speaking or Italian speaking, it means bastard. <laughs> so they, as sad as it might be, they just gave him a number, number two bastard um, right here. And there we found his name. It says Pescatore Umberto Arnaldo and all of this verbiage, which was next to it. So uh, the mystery was solved until the woman who worked there said, you know what, I think there's a story about this. My father was the town clerk and my grandfather was the town clerk and we can translate this for you. So here's the translation. Basically what it says, in 1882, there was a monastery in uh, Montefalcione, Italy. 
And in the monastery, there was a wheel in the town where the townspeople used to come and they would put fruit and um, fresh vegetables and fresh bread for the monks to come and, and have as their meals. And one day the monks came out and they found a, a two day old baby. And it was a little boy and it says that it was wrapped in rags and it didn't have any signs, letters or figures. So if somebody was um, gonna put up a baby for adoption, they would give it a piece of cloth or something or a sign that they could keep with them for their whole life if they wanted to find their birth parents, they would have that sign or piece of cloth to find them. And this says there was no cloth, a piece of, of um, uh, any sign or anything like that. And the bottom line was, that was my grandfather. So <laughs> this little baby was um, found in a basket. He was abandoned and they gave him the name Umberto Arnaldo. And in the day they would give bastards um, a name that was a trades, a trades name because they didn't have a last name. So they picked fishermen. And if you could see at the top, it says Fisherman Umberto Arnaldo. So that's the story of my grandfather. He was like Moses. <laughs> I like to laugh at this picture. He was um, a baby in a basket. And because I think it's an uplifting story in the times that we have right now, you know, a lot of bad things are going on, that I thought I would just show you that he came to America. He started a horse and team transportation business. Um, he did really well for himself. He had 10 of his own children. He had um, 29 grandchildren, over 100 great-grandchildren, and, and an amazing amount of great-grandchildren. So um, I thought it was just a unique story that I would share with you guys that you don't know what somebody's uh, roots are, and, but I thought it was an interesting story, and I hope you guys did too. So with that, um, the other thing that makes me happy, um, other than my faith, oh, and this is about 1% of my family, my immediate family. We all get together on the 3rd of July, and this is literally about 1% of them. If the entire family showed up, we would have to take the picture from a plane because my family is so absolutely huge. Um, the other thing that makes me super happy is where I live. I'm really, really lucky to live um, in a town that's right on the water. And I would say just about every single day, I take a walk down to the harbor, if unless it's um, completely you know, miserable out. It's about a mile from my house to the, um, the harbor. I'm, I'm actually looking at the harbor right now. You can't see it behind me because um, my other system wasn't working, so I have to be on my big laptop. But it's kind of a cool place to live. Um, you know, it usually looks like this with just some small boats and everything. And then for six months of the year, I um, moved down to the beach house, which Tom Dieterle will make fun of me a lot. But I spend, <laughs> I spend a lot of time here as well. Um, this was a house that I grew up in, and um, I, I own it with my sister and I, and we split it. But I pretty much spend anything from like April to October right here on um, Sunrise Beach. And uh, this is what the beach looks like. So when I'm not walking uh, down the harbor in the winter, I'm walking the beach pretty much every morning, um, you know, just kind of clearing my head, if you will. And uh, if it's miserable out, sometimes I will, you know, uh, this is the actual sound that I hear almost every day outside of my window. So it's a pretty special place to live. Um, I know I'm super blessed to live here. And occasionally, um, I don't know whether you can see this, that's it. Um, I was going to show you that there are always boats that are coming through. So with that, um, that's me, and um, that's all I got. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about um, about my world, and um, you know about my life. Thank you very much, Anne. It was amazing. It was Thank nice. you, Anne. Thank you, Anne. That was great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Bye, Anne. guys. Bye. Thank you so much, Anne. Take care. See you Thanks, tomorrow. Anne. Okay.